Shown here are the parts for the manifold build. On the left column is a piece of 3 inch square tube by 12 inches long. In the middle column are three pieces of sheet steel. The top piece will become the manifold diverter, which spreads the air and fuel equally along the length of the chamber. The next two square pieces of steel are the end caps for the piece of, of pipe. The bottom pipe is a section of a merchant coupling that fits onto inch and a half pipe. In the third column on the right is the four tabs that will weld onto the burner body of the manifold to act as stops and hold the manifold at the proper depth in the chamber of the forge. And the bottom round cutout is from the hole saw where the inch and a half pipe comes in and brings in all the air and fuel. Here the three inch square tube is being scribed a half inch in from each of the four edges to mark out the area to cut out for the manifold. I've never used a jigsaw before on steel. Well, it's a metal blade. Check and make sure that the blade isn't going to hit the bottom of your tubing when you're cutting. Then securely clamp your work. We've drilled starter holes. Make sure that the base of the jigsaw is setting firmly on the piece. And with any tool, get up to full RPM before engaging the blade in the material. As you're cutting, yep. cut down here and get to about an eighth of an inch from the hole. Okay. And then do the next one, and then do the next one, and then do the next one, so that it's still held in on all four corners. Okay. Then you can go back and from each hole, go back to where the cut is. Okay. And you won't end up with this thing flopping, flopping around, around and being a problem. While cutting? Yeah. Okay. Here Dan is cutting the steel for the end caps of the 3 inch square tube. Here Dan is punching holes in the diffuser plate. The hole pattern for the diffuser plate is nothing terribly specific. It is just a well laid out array of holes in order to allow some air to flow through the diffuser plate, but air to also be deflected down to the ends of the manifold pipe. Dan, would you explain what you're doing? I am bending this using Using this little blunt tipped repose tool, I formed a crease across the center line, which created a weak spot in the plate. And that allowed me to bend it more or less in a straight line to form the roof of the house. Which as the air comes down, it will help diffuse the air. Some of the air goes through the holes and some of the air will be distributed along the length of your burner.
Now that's a little bit steep there, so we're gonna maybe flatten it out a little bit. The air comes down, and this is in there like that. And you can see there's another one in there. Well, maybe you can see that. This is the forge I'll be modifying to run the burner on. Um, currently it has about an inch and a half of insulate, KO wall insulation and it will be getting a refractory covering over that. And what's important and I want to point out here is that the burner be mounted so that the face of the burner where all the burn holes are is located at the same depth as the refractory coating so that the burner is not sticking proud or below the level of the refractory too far. So it should be about flush with the refractory. And so to do that there have been four tabs welded onto the burner here. So on the outside of the shell of the forge I'll be attaching a mounting bracket that will bottom out on these tabs and the mounting bracket will be thick enough that it'll then hold the face of the burner level with the inside of the refractory of the forge.